uh, from a small acorns grow mighty plastic plants. Oh, that's it. It's not moved. It's not moved. A, I was going to say it's not budged an inch. It's not moved a millimetre. Nothing. We'll continue to water it. We'll check. Let's check back next year, shall we? A slightly different video for you today. Um, some sneaky behind the scenes stuff, basically. As you know, we upload a video every day on this channel. I upload a video every day over on the main Hammer Chat channel. And pretty much as soon as the season starts, we upload a video pretty much every day on the Patreon channel as well. We're going to show you some of it. Don't need you to do anything. Just watch. Kick back. Enjoy. Particularly enjoy the bit where Tony... Uh, look, I'll be honest, Charlie's going to edit this video. Uh, I'll be very surprised if he doesn't edit uh, Tony uh, at the Man City game, losing his mind uh, uh, early in Haaland, scoring against West Ham. Hopefully that should be a good bit. Uh, we got loads of stuff, loads of stuff from our podcast, loads of stuff from our player rating, so you'll get to see a little bit of what myself and Gio thought. We're a little bit unedited. Uh, we play it safe sometimes over on these channels. Relax a little bit over on Patreon. Um, and in a comfort, in a bosom of, of regular watchers, if you want. Uh, you'll also see a look. A little bit behind the scenes stuff from Gio has done a sort of what goes into um, making Hammers chat. And it's, I'll be honest with you, I'll be honest with you, he's a bit of a busy boy, Gio. Anyway, there you go. Enjoy what is on display today. I'm going to go and uh, water my plant. Were you in terms of the training and how everybody in the club spoke about Bobby Moore? Were you, was he, not his shadow, but was his presence still sort of felt at the club? No, not at all, Gonzalo. Really? Not because Not because... Uh, you know, he didn't deserve to be, but he was he was almost wiped out from West Ham's history. Wow. And, you know, we've spoken, I've spoken about it before, the way West Ham treated him, the way England treated him was disgraceful, absolutely yes. disgraceful. You know, to the point where I think he was, you know, once he didn't have a ticket or he got he nearly threw him out or something, you know, he'd only gone to watch West Ham play, you know. So, I mean, I was obviously first spell, I was 1981 to 1988. I never met Bobby Moore at the training ground, which to me wow. is a joke. It's an absolute joke. Um, I I met Bobby when I was at Everton, um, and you know he 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 was genuinely genuinely concerned about how I was playing at Everton, and he called me over after a game and spoke to me, and I thought, wow, what a class person, you know, to do that. And you know, I was, I was having a tough time at Everton at the time, and he called me over, and you know, and and you just think, well, you know, someone like that, you you shouldn't. You know, it's one of the things that drives me mad, Gonzo. I think we have legendary players, not just at our club, but other football clubs, and and they're allowed to leave and allowed, allowed to go and not not be a part of what's going to happen in the future. Yeah. And there's, there's a young man who's just retired at our football club, and I just hope there is some sort of role there for him. You know, and I, even if he wants to be the ball boy, just let Mark Noble be a part of the club because you know he's part of the history, and you need people like Mark Noble, you needy people like Bobby Moore around the football club. That is what the fans remember, what they what they associate with, you know, especially young boys who come through that are part of the club who, who are West Ham fans and grew up in East London or Essex and, and want to play for the club. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's very sad how Bobby was treated. Let's hope they learn the lessons and Mark Noble's treated a lot better than Bobby Moore. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. I think Moyes knows the value of it. Um, exactly. And, and he, even, even if Sullivan doesn't, yeah. I think he'd still do it because he wouldn't want the backlash, if if you know what I mean. But anyway, the bad news is we found out this afternoon we had a, a brand deal lined up for all the live build-up shows and watch-alongs for this season with a brand deal. Oh, it was all agreed. Um, there wasn't a contract signed, though, so perhaps it's my own fault for being a bit naive and just trusting the brand. Anyway, we've just discovered today that they don't wish to go ahead with it. They're keen to go ahead with it in three months' time which is sort of fine, but we've now got a three-month gap. All the money we were going to earn from that brand deal was going to Charlie as well. It was going to be Charlie's pay. He gets a little bit of Patreon money, plus that brand deal was going to go to Charlie because it's his part-time job. We, he does a lot for us, a lot of things behind the scenes that people just will never see or never realise how much he does. So now we've got a bit of an issue, me and Gonzo. Um, I mean, it's Wednesday night, so we've got two days, two working days, and then it's the first game of the season. So the chance of getting something in place for the City game is next to impossible. If we do really well get something in place at all, never mind for the Nottingham Forest game next weekend. So we've got a bit of an issue now. So we've got a bit of a hole in the finances and there's only two solutions. Well, there's three. The first one, the ideal one, get a replacement brand deal in, sorted. The second one, the money has to then come out of mine in Gonzo's pocket and go to Charlie, which is the most likely one, um, which is... You're know, obviously fine for Charlie, but obviously it's not ideal for me or Gonzo. Or the third one is we um, don't give Charlie any money out of our pocket and he just does less for Hammers Chat. But that's no use to him. It's no use to us. Um, 
so a bit of a, a bit of a problem, a bit of a blow. I'm a bit gutted actually because I just trusted the brand deal, if you like. Um, so I put up a little post on LinkedIn asking if anyone wants to sponsor the series. Not had anyone come forward as yet. Bit of a blow, but I'll worry about it tonight. This is the type of thing I struggle to sleep at night. Like I just I can't switch off. I've always I've been like this all my life. I cannot switch off from things. So tonight, I know fine what's going to happen. I'll get this done, put it up, make the tea. Mrs. Geo's doesn't finish till six o'clock tonight, so I'll make the tea for when she comes in. I'll spend a couple of hours with her this evening, and then got a little bit more work to do. And then when we go to bed tonight, I know fine what's going to happen. I'm just going to lay there, and it's just going to be going over and over and over and over in my head. So in a weird way, I'm just dreading going to bed tonight because this is going to be bugging me a little bit until I find a solution. But I've got tomorrow, uh, 48 hours to find a solution, essentially. Not ideal, but it's the industry we're in. And that leaves their big man, as in big man, big profile, big money spent on him, Erling Haaland through the middle. And this is why the game is on Sky Sports at 4.30 on Sunday. Because Sky Sports are wanting their Haaland fairy tale. They're wanting to see him score a couple of goals. Now, we spoke about the weaknesses, the strengths... I don't really need to speak about it, do it. They've just got world-class players in every single position. We know how good these players can be. But I'll tell you what, though. When we sat deep against them in May and we played inside our own 18-yarder and said, what are you going to do? Now, they got their two goals, but we made it difficult for them. And they often, they usually do big sides down. I do think there's going to be a different dynamic to Manchester City this season because in May, what did they not have? Not necessarily Haaland, just a striker. They didn't have that big target man in the middle of the box. They could get the ball out wide. He was having all the ball out there, but he couldn't do much with it. His only option was to give it back to the centre midfielders. But now City can be a little bit more direct and just stick that ball in the 18-yarder and give it to Alan. and say, well, there you go, you have it. Get the ball into your number nine. Um, they're going to be a different beast this season now. I think Manchester City will do very, very well to come away from the game with anything. It's, it reminds me when I used to play football, we used to get told, if we get beat, you make sure the other teams had to give 100% and the other teams had to play well to beat you. If you get beat and both of those things are true, we can accept that loss. And I think I'm using that sort of rule of thumb on Sunday, really. I'm looking for indicators and signs for us over the course of the season rather than 90 minutes but we can harm this Manchester City team like I said Ake and Cancelo are going to be there to be got at I want to see Bowen and Antonio almost double teaming them and then we've obviously hopefully have Skimaka on the bench as an option we strongly believe we provide good value for money over on Patreon with our additional video content as well as a few perks you get for helping support Hammers Chat and in the month of August to prove this we're putting our well we're putting your money where our mouth is is because if you sign up this month and you don't like it we're going to give you your money back to take part in this offer simply head over to patreon.com forward slash hammers chat and subscribe to the supporters tier it will cost you three pounds sixty that's the all-in price including vat that's what you'll get charged today and then sit back enjoy the additional video content for the rest of the month and if come the end of august you don't like it you don't think it's good value for money Get in touch with us here at Hammers Chat and we will issue you a refund of your £3.60. Simple as that. Give it a try. You've got nothing to lose. Literally. So it's about it's about four hours since my last update on the video. I've been down there. Much beer has been drunketh. But we've got a team. We're about to head to the stadium now. We've got a team tone. Go on. Can it's... I guess it before you say it? Go on then. Soufal? Fabianski in goal? Yes. Oh, he has. He's... Anyway. Um, Fabianski in goal... Soufal? Yes. Dawson? No. No Dawson, I'm no. gonna. Alright, she's gone Diop? No. Johnson? Yes. Zuma? Yes. Cresswell? Yes. Fornells? Yes. Rice? Yes. Suchek? Yes. Bowen? Yes. Antonio? Yes. Lanzini? Yes. I don't know why I know. Well, well, I don't know. I didn't get too wrong. Or, or, or is David Moore is just horribly predictable. Ariola, Randolph, Ashby. Coventry, Downs, Oko, Flex, Vlasic, Ben Rama, Skabacha. Ooh! Oh, yeah. Well, we like the last one, son. Oh, you you should like you should be smoking a cigar with that hat on. Right, I got, we're going to the stadium. I've got to say, getting in was a lot easier than I thought. I've been slagging it off for the best part of two weeks. Um, it worked. The G-Pay worked. The wallet. That was it. It was the wallet. 
the, the G wallet or whatever, I don't know. Anyway, here we go, here's a stadium. We're doing something, you know, they're not having it all their own way, which they have been for much of the game, most of the game. It's a little bit, that's Grealish against Soufaldi, you possibly saw there. Bit of a mismatch this game, I'll be honest with you. And uh, obviously, with Soufaldi being the better player, here's Haaland. Ah, uh, that's crap. That's crap. I'll probably sign off here, boys and girls, because let's be fair, it's 87. Minutes, it's 2 0 Manchester City. We've not really attacked them at all. One little positive though, oh my goodness, they just almost scored again. Uh, one little positive though is that uh, Skamakas looks, looks pretty good. He really did look, uh, <laughs> looks okay. It's Tony. Tony. It's not happy. If you were thinking it's just videos on the Patreon, then you would be mistaken because we also do monthly giveaways. This month, of course, we were giving away two signed shirts, one of Elise and the second one of the legend, in my opinion, Mark Noble, plus a few other cheeky small prizes in there as well. Anyway, while all that was going on, I was catching up with Jack Elderson from Analytics United for our brand new series. Have a look. OK, we're sitting deep and we're trying to contain it and deal with it, which is what we did last season. And, you know, if we're hitting those out balls, we're sort of putting a heck of a lot of pressure on Antonio and Bowen to just do magic, basically. Yeah. And like, don't get me wrong, they're both capable of doing it, but we're just going, please do it. Or we maybe step out of ourselves a little bit and go for it a bit. And then that felt almost kamikaze, even even just doing it slightly felt kamikaze. I don't know. Was yeah. it... What would have, could we have stepped to them is basically the question I'm asking. Very, very difficult now with Haaland because effectively what happens is when you when you step out of that, that low block stru structure and go out and press them, it's yeah. very difficult to track the space then with Haaland. It opens those those spaces for him to attack down the sides much, much more. And you see that with the second goal. Effectively, we moved mm. out to press a little bit more. Soufal advanced to try and join the press. And then they played one pass inside, crossed into the half space with, with Kevin De Bruyne. And then suddenly it's Haaland moving it at speed with 40 yards to run into up against Johnson and Zuma. And there's only ever going to be one winner in that situation. It is near impossible for any centre-back in the league to be able to match him in, in those situations. So it's very, very difficult. And also, I think, you know, you've got to factor in their comfortability on the ball. Mm. which is just well above nearly what well, I mean it's well above any team in the division and if you look at the the press success uh numbers uh, for the match even even players who are pressing quite a lot you know someone like Pablo Fornals who who likes to to get about and, and make as many pressures as he possibly can in a game 28 mm. pressures against City zero successful mm. Jared Bowen 19 pressures two successful Soufal had one out of 10 Suchek had none out of 10 these are dramatically low pressing success mm. numbers, which is just basically every time you go and even make a good pressure, you're coming up up against players who are so good that they're quite comfortable turning out or they've got another player to, to pass to two yards away who's got unbelievable ability to get out of those situations. Mm. Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. It's our first player ratings of the series as West Ham United were defeated by two goals to nil by Manchester City with a debut for Connor Coventry, a debut for Flynn Downs, and a yeah. debut for the Hammer Shack player ratings notebook as well. I've got my numbers ready to rock and roll. But for you have at home want you to play along with this series this season. So, so in the comments on Patreon, not YouTube, on Patreon, on the post that you found this video, just leave your player ratings underneath as well. We can have a little look and see what you're all thinking. Um, now, this is, I'll be honest, this is where my marks start to get a little lower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you yeah. thought the fours were bad. They're, yeah. they're a way to drop. Yes, um, we 
Uh, Suchek it was a complete and utter mismatch uh, to watch him against. I thought Rodri was good, by the way, in, in that game. Um, to watch him against Gundogan, who you mentioned there, who you played, played well. Um, I, I don't want to say he can't play in this team. He can't play against teams like that because it's too much of a broad stroke to say that. We know Suchek has done well for us, but that was an atrocious performance. Uh, he looked off the pace. He looked completely outclassed. Um, there were just, there was still this technique on the pitch, and he didn't have any of it. Um, I thought he was easily manoeuvred around by the opposition. That was, he can impose himself with tackles. He can. He was almost there, as you know, like you might get a tactical shape. And, and uh, the, you know, the manager might say, oh, well, so some there, some there, and then just in front. And well, he was just there as a as a person, part of the tactics. You could have almost swapped anyone out, out there. There was nothing exceptional came uh, from him at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually, I'll go further than that. But it was a complete hindrance. We needed someone there to play the pass out or to, to help with the attack. And I'll get to the attack in a minute, but because I, I've, said in the video, I, I felt we played that whole game with two attackers the whole time. But someone to spread the pass, someone to make the counter-attack, do something, man. Um, and I've watched that game there. And when I watched that game, I thought this would give um, all the reasoning to, the, to those who suspect Moyes wants him out because Moyes needs a, I'm going to say it, a proper midfielder in there that, that can either run or, sorry, not run, but pass. And, do you know what I mean? Just someone that's comfortable on the ball. Um I'm going to be nice, and I mean really nice, and give him a three. Yeah, I've given him a three as well. I think there was a couple of moments where he did break up the play well, and there was a couple of say, nice passes where he'd be under pressure. He would just give a nice, simple pass, and that's what he's there to do. But I haven't checked this. I've seen it on social media. I probably should just have checked it myself. But he did 16 passes. You know, oh. He's a centre midfielder playing 90 minutes. And I know we're not going to have much of the ball against Man City. But he didn't touch the ball until 12 minutes and nine seconds on the clock. And the only reason I remember, I know that fact, is because there's about seven minutes in, the commentator said, Suchek has yet to touch the ball. Wow. But, wow, OK, so I'm going to watch to see when he touches the ball. And it was 12 minutes in, he was just to kick it away as well. It wasn't even a pass, he just cleared it. And I thought, bloody hell, I mean, he's just been chasing shadows a little bit. Now, what I will say, they've just come up against the best team in the league, Rice and Suchek, and the best centre midfield in the league. And Moyes has then said, I didn't know what to do with the way they played their full-backs. Now, that's something Man City have always done. What I will yeah. say is they perhaps don't always put both of them into midfield at the same time. It's usually one of them goes in anyway. But if Moyes is conceding that, then I have, then part of me thinks I've got to have a little bit of sympathy for the centre midfielders because basically what Moyes has just suggested is they overloaded centre midfield and I did nothing because I didn't know what to do. So then that would suggest that our centre midfielders, I mean, we just turned up to a fight with a, a, a little twig while the opponent's got a gun, not even a sword. They've actually got a hand pistol and we're standing there with a twig going, do you want to fight? It wasn't a fair fight yesterday, but I still found myself disappointed by Suchek's performance. Um, so I'll give him a three. And like I said, I'm a bit like yourself. I'm trying to be gentle on him, but... Before the Man City game, I was almost certain, regardless of what happened yesterday, Suchek, I would like to see Suchek start against Nottingham Forest. It was that bad. I'm not even sure I want Suchek to start against Nottingham Forest. No, no, no. I'd agree. I'd agree. And that really is just a small sample of what we've got going on over on the Patreon at the moment. There were even videos from this week I didn't even have time to include. So if you haven't already, make sure to check it out. Link in the description below as well as the comments. That's patreon.com forward slash hammers chat to sign up. And if you do do that, you'll be able to watch all of this week's content, including tonight's Patreon exclusive podcast, Two Spanners, One Hammer. On Friday, we have Geo's opposition predictions show. We have the breakfast show on Sunday morning before for the match as we always do and then next week the unbeatable the brilliant the slightly weird but i can tell you for a fact very lovely man mike makes his long awaited return as well as an exclusive q a with ian bishop coming up later in the month so if you haven't already patreon.com forward slash hammers chat and hey while you're here subscribe to the channel you know Gonzo does good work so give him a subscribe and a like cheers everyone bye